I'm Charlotte. And I'm Lindsay. Welcome to Yoga with Charlotte and Lindsay. Now, even though we are locked down in the safety of our homes at the minute, we still wanted to bring you um, a Yoga with Charlotte and Lindsay session just from the comfort of our living rooms. And you probably notice once we get started that I'm quite far into my third trimester of pregnancy. So uh, we should point out this isn't a um, pregnancy yoga session but there will be adaptations uh, for myself and of course if there's any experienced yogis out there who also happen to be pregnant you can take the adaptations too. We might ask you at some points during the session to grab a block or maybe a, a cushion um, just to help with some of the postures so maybe just pause the video now and go and grab yourself and one or the other if you wish. Um, please make sure as always that you have lots of space to practice in today or at the very least a, a safe space around you and of course take a drink uh, as often as you need to during the session and we hope you enjoy. Okay everyone so we're going to start in a comfortable seated position so uh, that means just grabbing a block or a cushion uh, just to sit on if that makes you more comfortable then just grab one now and we'll get started. So we'll begin by connecting our breath with our movement. So let's start by taking a big breath in. We lift the arms overhead and then as we exhale we float the arms down all the way back down to the floor and again we breathe in to lift. Finding length in the upper body and then exhale to float the arms down. This time we breathe in up to centre and then we'll take a twist, doesn't matter what side we start on. Fingertips come all the way down either side of the body and then a big breath in to lift back to centre, same on the other side. We exhale to float the hands down, hands in front and behind and again breathing in to lift. Once more each side, exhaling, fingertips come down and breathing into center. Exhale to float the arms down. This time we breathe in to lift the arms. So right hand comes down beside us, fingertips or palms down or palm down. We reach up to the ceiling with the left and then we take a reach over, relaxing that bottom shoulder and elbow and really lengthening through the side of the body without allowing the pelvis to tip with us. So trying to keep a neutral position in the pelvis. And a breath in to center. Same on the other side. Left hand comes down beside us a little way away from the body. Breathing in to lengthen on the right side. And we reach. Bending that bottom elbow, releasing that bottom shoulder. And then let's breathe in all the way up to the top again. This time we reach forwards. So come just as far forwards as feels good today. Hands, uh, fingertips or palms come down and maybe take a little walk forward with the hands if that feels good. Just see how much space you've got, how the hips feel. Another deep breath here. Think about relaxing the neck, lengthening the spine. And then let's walk the hands back up towards the body. Bit of support, the hands down beside us as we swap the legs. So we're crossing the legs the other way. And another big breath in to lift the arms and we reach forwards again, taking it only as far as feels good today. We're just easing in at the moment. A deep breath or two here. And just notice how it feels different on one side to the other. And then when you're ready, walking the hands up. And then you can Rejig the legs again if you wish, up to you. From here, one more big breath in. Let's lift the arms palm to palm and draw the hands down to the heart center. We interlace the fingers and let's take a roll through of the wrists. Bit of preparation for what's to come. And then we pause and we reverse. Just a few times in this direction. And then from here, we're going to release the hands and make our way forward onto all four. So just make sure you have enough space ahead of you. We bring hands down in front and we make sure that shoulders are right above the wrists, that knees are right underneath the hips. And we can tuck or untuck the toes. From here, a couple of rounds of cat-cow breathing. So as we breathe in, we find a gentle arch in the spine. We lift the tailbone and we look up a little bit. 
As we exhale, we draw the tummy in and up, a rounding of the spine, like a cat stretching. Look towards the belly button, and then again, breathing in to look up. We find that little arch in the spine, tailbone lifts. And again, exhale to draw everything in and up. And just make this gentle. Keep going at your pace, breathing in to look up, arch the spine, exhaling to reverse. Last round, one more time, looking up, last time to round the spine. Let's come back to a neutral spine. And then from here, we're going to lift into our first downward dog. So we touch, uh, we tuck the toes and we press down through the heels, pelvis is high, maybe take a little pad through the feet. And then from here, let's walk the hands towards the feet and then slowly uncurl up through the spine, using the hands for support, up the legs if needed. Ooh, and just take your time to come up gently, let everything rebalance. And from here, we'll come to the top of our mat. So we're going to start um, with a couple of half sun salutations and then we'll go on to a couple of full sun, sun salutations. So we start in our mountain pose. So we want to make sure that either toes are together with heels slightly apart um, or if you're making a bit more space for a bump today then a wider stance is super. So finding your, your ideal uh, foot position we make sure we're relaxing the shoulders down away from the ears. We're standing tall we're really engaging the legs. We want to find a nice neutral position, comfortable neutral position for the pelvis. And we activate the arms all the way down to the fingertips. So let's take a big breath in. We lift the arms up overhead. You can take a little back bend here if you wish. And then as we exhale, we float down into our forward fold. Bend the knees as much as you need. From here, we breathe in to look up. And then we exhale, take a big step back with the right foot. From here, we release the knee down. We make sure this front knee is right above our ankle. And then we breathe in to lift the arms up. And we open up the heart towards the ceiling. The arms are wide. Just take a moment here in this lunge. And then we exhale to bring hands back down. We frame the foot and we step forwards again into that long spine, we exhale into our fold, and then we breathe in to lift all the way up, and then exhale to bring the arms down. And I'm just gonna take a little step back because I'm right next to my sofa and I haven't got enough space. To, so <laughs> let's go again. We breathe in to lift. So we exhale to float down, bend the knees as much as you need to. We breathe into that long spine, Looking up a little bit, we exhale to step, big step back with the left foot and we drop the back knee down, front knee is right above the ankle. We breathe in to lift the arms high. Let's take a moment here to really open up. Heart is lifted towards the ceiling, chest is open, arms wide. And then we float the hands back down. We frame the foot and we step back in to the front of the mat. We breathe into that lovely long spine, exhale to the fold. And then we breathe in to come all the way up and exhale down. Okay, full sun salutations this time. We breathe in to lift. We exhale to fold forwards. Let's breathe into that lovely long spine, looking halfway up. We exhale, step back, right foot. Now, a couple of choices here. Either you join me in a plank position or join Charlotte on all fours in a tabletop position. If you're in your plank, lower knees, chest and chin, elbows close to the body, then glide the chest forwards for a little cobra. And then we tuck the toes and we lift to our downward facing dog. And let's all meet here. Let's take a moment or two to pad through the heels So we're thinking about opening through the shoulders, ears roughly in line with the insides of the arms. And easing in the backs of the legs and the Achilles. One more breath. There's always the option here guys to bring the knees down. 
And then let's look between the hands. We step right foot through, followed by the left. That lovely long spine. And then we fold. We breathe in to come all the way up. And then exhale to float the arms. And again, we breathe in to lift. We exhale to float down. Breathing in to look up and halfway. And then we exhale, big step back, left foot. So your choice again, either come into your plank or join Charlotte on all fours and we lower knees, chest and chin. We glide the chest up, elbows in, and then we tuck toes and we lift to downward facing dog. Again, if it feels good, keep padding through the feet. Keep easing in back to the legs. And if you wish, just press both heels down. Find that length in the backs of the legs. No need to have the heels right on the floor. Work wherever you're at. Then we look between the hands. We bring the left foot forwards, followed by the right. We breathe into that lovely long spine, exhale into our fold, knees bending as much as needed, and then a breath in to come all the way up. And then exhale, release the arms. And maybe just take a moment here, notice any changes in the body, any sensations. You notice your heart rate, your breathing, has it changed? And now I'm going to hand back over to Charlotte. Thank you, Lindsay. My heart rate's changed. That was a wonderful warm up. Thank you. So, we're going to take it into a warrior uh, series now. So, again, standing at the front of your mat, just like Lindsay described before we did our sun salutations. Find that gorgeous, strong mountain pose here. Nice, tall, long spine. And from there, keeping the hips facing this edge of the mat. I'm going to take a big step back. I'm going on my right foot first so I can see the camera clearly, but by all means, you can do whichever foot because we will do both sides. So keeping the hips and shoulders facing the edge of your mat, you want that back foot about 45 degrees. Bringing the hands to the hips just to help make sure you're squaring the hips up. And breathe here in your warrior one. And from there, keeping that gorgeous stance, breathe in to take the arms up above the head. And lengthen them tall. And the hands can be apart or together in prayer if you prefer. Just really indulge in this gorgeous posture. And keeping your warrior one stance, you're going to bring the arms back down and take them behind your back to either hold on to your elbows or to your reverse prayer, whichever is comfortable for you, just to bring a bit more opening up in the shoulders. Take another deep breath here. Then on your next inhale, breathe in, release the arms, take them all the way back up. Breathing out as you open the arms, adjust the feet slightly, and we'll find warrior two on the first side. Shoulders down, away from the ears, arms along. And looking way beyond the fingertips of that front hand. And when you're there, just have a little peek down. Make sure you can see the big toe on the front foot, and then the knee is not rolling in, so really work out from the hip there. So, in this gorgeous strong stance, lower the back hand, turn the front palm up, breathe in to come up to your reverse warrior. Then you're either looking up towards the hand or forward, it's your practice, whatever works for you, aiming to keep that knee above the ankle on the front leg. Really nice. And then from there, when you're ready, float the arms back to warrior two. Lengthen the front leg, so both legs are long. Wonderful. Keeping the pelvis and hips underneath you. 
Breathe in to hinge forward, reaching over the front leg. And then breathe out to tilt into your triangle posture. Working that top shoulder blade down the back. This arm that's lower, you can rest it on the shin if you wish, which is what I'm doing today for that bit more support. Or you might want to turn the palm forward like Lindsay's doing. Face on the front, beautiful. Really think about opening up in the chest, keeping the pelvis underneath us. Really, really nice, everybody. From there, lower the gaze down and carefully, slowly bring the arms and the body back up. Wonderful. From there, simply reverse your feet to face the other end of your mat. Bring the hands to the hips. Fabulous. So again, you want that back foot, the new back foot, about 45 degree angle, hips and shoulders in line, facing the other end. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend in your new front leg. Fabulous. Finding warrior stance, second side. Either stay in there or breathe in to take your arms up. Exhale, really indulge in the posture. Hands can be apart or together, whichever you prefer. Some people like to also lift the gaze up towards the hands. Don't mind. From there, let's open the arms like we did the first side, bringing the arms behind the back. I'll turn around to show you. Either holding on to the elbows or your reverse prayer. Really think about opening up in those shoulders there. Which might help you for an option that we've got for you later on. Lovely stuff. From there, breathe in, release the arms, take them all the way back up. And as you breathe out, adjust the feet as you need to, opening the arms, finding warrior two, second side. So again, knee above the ankle, arms long and strong, shoulders away from your ears. And breathe deep. Really, really powerful posture. From there, low in the back arm, turn front palm up. Breathe in as you take that arm up to the ceiling for your reverse warrior and try and keep the pelvis and the legs where they are. either gazing up or keeping the gaze forward, whatever feels better. But keep using that deep breath. Really great strengthening sequence on the legs, this one. When you're ready on your next inhale, bring the arms back to warrior two. Fabulous. Lengthen that front leg. Bit of release there. Keeping that pelvis tucked underneath you. Breathe in to reach forward, hinging from the hips. Breathe out to tilt into your triangle on the second side. Again, top shoulder down the back. Rest in the hand if you wish or releasing if you want to work that a little bit harder. Really beautiful. And then when you're ready, bringing the gaze down on your inhale, lifting up. Fabulous. Release the arms down and turning that foot in slightly. So we're now going to face the long edge of our mats. Wonderful. So you might want to bring the feet in a little bit for our next posture, which is going to be goddess posture, but you still want a nice wide stance. You want the toes pointing to the corners of your mat, okay? Fabulous. Keeping the pelvis as underneath as, as is possible, it might want to go back slightly. Let's take a deep breath in as we bend the knees, plie, and bring the arms and the body all the way up, palms together, 
breathe out as we come down, hands to heart centre, nice wide squat here, beautiful. And again, breathe in, take the arms up. Breathe out, draw the hands down to heart centre as we take our second one. Lovely, three more. Breathe in, up we go. Breathe out to lower. Amazing. Two more, breathing in. Breathing out to lower. You might find you go a little bit lower each time as we get the hips and thighs warmer. Another time, breathe in. And breathe out, down we go. Let's just hold here for a couple of breaths. Hands in front of the heart. Real energizing posture as well as strengthening. Amazing work. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can. And then inhale to come all the way back up and exhale to release. Beautiful, fabulous. From there, let's do a little stretch. We've done a lot of strengthening. So staying with a wide leg, try to take the feet parallel. So they're in line with the edges of your mat. Back. Bring the hands to the hips. Lovely. Breathe in to look up as you fill your lungs. And breathe out as you hinge forward from the hips, keeping the core nice and strong and the spine long. And you might want to pause at halfway or slowly continue your fold, keeping the weight forward in the feet, the hand over the legs and let gravity do the work here. Then release the hands. You can either rest them on the mat, or you might want to use a block or a book or a cushion, whatever you've got in your homes, uh, to rest the hands on if that's what you prefer. And just breathe deep here. If there's a hand position you prefer, walking the hands through the legs or holding the big toes, please do the version that feels good for you right now. One more deep breath. And then when you're ready, lift the gaze slightly, bring the hands to the hips, strong thigh, strong core, slowly take your time to unroll back to a right position. Wonderful. Take a moment there if you need to. We're going to do a second fold, either the same again or the hands can be holding on to the elbows like earlier, or reverse prayer, or we can clasp the hands and take them over the head that way. It's up to you. So find your choice of posture. Breathe in to fill the lungs and breathe out as you slowly and carefully take your fold. Relaxing the head and neck when you get there. Fabulous. And just breathe deep. One more deep breath. And keeping the hands in their position, knees and thighs drawn up strong, tummy tight, as you slowly find your way back up, being nice and tall. And then we're just going to carefully keep the feet in as we release the arms, roll out the shoulders, shake out the legs, have a sip of water if you wish, and then Liz is going to take over for some balancing. I'm going to do just that, Charlotte. Thank you. I am. <laughs> okay, my legs feel great, but super warm. So <laughs> ready for the next bit. So as Charlotte said, we're going to balance next. So um, if you know you need a bit of extra support, I just recommend 
um, maybe just finding yourself near a wall or grabbing a chair to have beside you for this next one. So we're going to start in, uh, in tree pose. So we're going to start by spreading the feet or spreading the toes nice and wide, making a really big base as much as possible and pressing into all the parts of the feet. Now let's start by balancing on the left. So we're going to turn our right knee out towards the side and a few options for the leg. So the first one is to bring the heel against the side of the ankle. The next is to come up to uh, the side of the calf, so um, the sole of the foot to the calf. A third option is to bring the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. And if your foot is high up here, think about really flexing and pressing uh, the heel into the side of the leg and really engaging that standing leg uh, to help kind of really solidify the pose. So once you're happy with your, your leg position, I should have said at the start, for your balance, find a fixed point ahead of you. So something that's not going to move. Uh, and then when you're ready, bring the hands together at the heart center. So really engaging the core here, making sure that we're using that deep working breath. We relax the shoulders down, legs really well activated. And then perhaps from here, with a breath in, take the arms up overhead. Now it's absolutely fine if you prefer to keep the hands down at heart center, if that's where you prefer to work today. And for those of you who would like a bit more of an opening for the hip here, uh, another balancing option to shift into is to bring the leg, the top leg, just across the top of the thigh. So we flex the foot, we bring the ankle um, onto the thigh just above the knee. We take a little bit of a bend in the supporting leg and then hands either back together at the heart center or we can reach them up, fingertips towards the ceiling. So you'll find that if you raise and lower the hips, you'll get a bit more or less of a stretch in the, the hip of the bent leg. So maybe just find a position that works for you. And take a breath. And then with support, ease that top leg off back to the floor. Maybe take a little pad through the feet. It's a lot of work for that standing leg and we'll do it all on the other side. So this time we spread the toes, so we lift them, press them down, and we turn this time the left leg out. So we want to keep the hips squared forwards, but we're rotating outwards. Either we bring the heel to the ankle, or we bring the foot to the side of the calf, or we come just up above the knee. So always avoid pressing firmly into the side of the knee in this posture, and then we bring hands together. We find that fixed point ahead of us. So we stand tall, abdominals engaged well, and then perhaps we lift the arms up overhead. Your choice. And then for those of you who want a little bit oh, more of a hip opener, then we flex the foot. We bring the ankle just above the knee on the top of the thigh and then hands either together at the heart center or we reach up high and we can adjust the depth of that stretch for the hip by just altering how high or low our hips are. A couple more breaths here. And then when you're ready, just supporting the leg as it comes out of that position, a little bit of a pad through the feet and the legs to ease them out. And then next we bring the feet about uh, just a little bit wider than hip width um, apart. And um, as we did before in goddess poses, Charlotte asked us to take our toes out slightly towards the diagonals, the you know, corners of our mat. We're going to do the same here. Now there are a couple of options here. One's going to be a much deeper squat, one's um, a little bit less for the hips. So just choose the version that works for you today. You might find in this position that you need maybe a block or a cushion. Um, for those of you who, who are coming all the way down into the full squats, maybe grab that now so that you're not having to shuffle around later on. Okay, so feet just wider than hip width. We take a big breath in, we lift the arms overhead. We come palm to palm. As we draw the hands down through the heart center, we sink the pelvis low and we find ourselves in garland pose. So 
let's uh, just talk through this quickly first. We bring the backs of the arms to the insides of the knees. We make sure the knees here are tracking over the toes, so making sure that we're not compromising any joints. We want a long spine here, so we're looking ahead and we release the shoulders down away from the ears. If you prefer to take uh, a slightly less deep version, we take the feet a little bit wider, still toes out towards the outside. We take a bend through the knees and we bring the backs of the forearms onto the legs, making sure that knees again are tracking over the toes, long spine looking ahead, um, and we'll go through our next couple of options from here instead if that works better. So from here, from wherever you are, either we're going to stay in our, um, in our garland pose, joining Charlotte, or if you'd like a bit of a twist, then we bring the hands down to, or a hand down to one side, just outside of the foot, and then we reach up on one side towards the ceiling, maybe take the focus up towards that top hand. And then let's swap. We bring the other hand down just outside of the foot and we reach up on the other side. Wherever you are, a couple more deep breaths. Let's bring hands back together at the heart center. And then find your own safe way to come down to a seated position. So that might simply mean bringing the hands down in front and having a little shuffle to bring the legs out in front. Okay, so make sure that you guys can all see me. Okay. Bit of a new experience doing yoga on a carpet because the mat seems to <laughs> shuffle around a bit of its own accord. So hopefully you can all see me. All right. So staff pose, just sitting, but it's, it can be a really lovely activating, strengthening pose. So we activate the legs by flexing the feet from the toes back towards the body. We sit really tall and we bring either the fingertips or the palms down beside us, beside the hips. Relax the shoulders down and we sit tall. Now let's take a couple of breaths here. The heart is forward, the focus is forward. Legs are really well activated. And just feel even just a couple of breaths in this pose. Certainly gets me warm. I don't know about you guys. So from here, we're going to take a twist. So we're going to start with the right leg coming up first. So we bend the knee and we bring um, the leg as well as close to that knee as is comfortable. So for some of us that will mean about a fist's distance between the knee and the foot. If you're making a bit more space for a bump today, then you might have that, um, that bent leg a little bit wider. So whatever works for you today. I'm going to do um, a closed twist version of this. And for those of you who are taking Charlotte's options today, she's going to do a more open version of this twist. So for the closed version of this twist, we take our left hand and we wrap it around the right foot. We take the right hand just behind us. We flex the foot of that uh, extended leg. We breathe in to lengthen up. We exhale to ease into our twist. So think about soaking a sponge and then wringing it out as we breathe in and out into our twist. And if you're doing the twist with me, I'm actually going to take the left hand behind me instead. And I'm going to take the right elbow gently on the inside of the right knee. And then I'm going to twist away from the knee instead of towards like Lindsay's doing. So I'm giving myself lots of safe space here. But same as Lindsay, I'm still thinking about a lovely tall, long spine and twisting to look over the shoulder, just with more space. Super. Thank you, Charlotte. So everyone, let's take another two deep breaths here. Maybe easing a little further into that twist, if that feels good, it feels safe for you. Give that last breath out. And then when you're ready, bring the head and the body back to center. If you've been doing this close twist version with me, maybe just take a little twist to the other side, just to counter that motion of the spine because we've been going a little bit deeper. And then back to center, we lengthen the leg and we'll do it all on the other side. So the left leg comes up 
either about a fist distance from the knee or take it wider if you need a bit more space today. For the closed version of the twist, we make sure that this extended leg is activated, we flex the foot. We breathe in tall, we hug that knee in, that bent knee in towards the body. Back hand sits just behind us on the floor, we breathe in to lengthen up and we exhale into our twist. And we can maybe ease a little bit further with every exhalation, like we're wringing out that sponge. Great. And with the open twist again, the extended leg can be nice and activated. Just take the bent leg a bit wider to give yourself more space. Left elbow on the inside of the knee, right hand behind you, breathe in to grow tall. Breathe out just a gentle look over that shoulder. So we don't twist as deeply, but we're still getting a lovely open twist and all the benefits of a twist. From here, when you're ready, bring the head and the body back to centre. Again, if you've taken the closed twist version, you might want to take a counter twist to the other direction. And then release that leg long. I absolutely love twists. It's something that I, I would build into every yoga practice of my own. It just feels so nice for the spine. I hope you enjoyed it too. Charlotte, it's back over to you. Thanks, Lindsay, in your lovely living room, to my living room. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do either an upward plank or an upward table. Um, so you want to be nice and lengthened out on your mat. Lindsay will demonstrate the upward plank and I will do the table. So for the upward plank, you want your legs long, together as much as possible. Nice plantar flexion of the feet to stretch the toes. So when we go up to posture, the feet might actually press against the mat. From there, you take the hands behind you and you grow tall with the fingertips usually going towards the toes if that feels okay on your shoulders. And on your inhale, you're just going to go with Lindsay and lift the pelvis up. For my version, upward table, which you can do whether you're pregnant or not, do the version you prefer. Fingertips in the same position, legs are just bent. We breathe in to lift the pelvis, activate those glutes, and you can either look up, or if it feels nice and comfortable to release the head back like Lindsay's doing, then by all means do. Just see what feels right for your body. Enjoy that opening up in the shoulders, lifting the pelvis, working the glutes. Take another breath. And as you breathe out very slowly and carefully, control it to come all the way down and release. Maybe roll out the shoulders. Fabulous. Okay. From there, we're approaching the end of our practice. So, before we finish, let's draw the feet together and open the knees for our lovely seated bound angle. Now, we're doing this for a release of the spine, but you'll also get a nice stretch in the hips as well. If you want more of a stretch in the hips, Bring the feet closer to the pelvis, okay? And you can breathe in and as you breathe out, you can work the knees down towards the mat. Or if you want more of a relaxed posture, which I'm doing today, have the feet a bit further away from you, give yourself a bit more space. You can either hold on to the feet or the ankles. Breathe in as you lengthen through your spine and then breathe out as you just relax the body forward. Either keeping the hands on your feet or ankles, or you can even bring the arms forward, turn the palms up, a kind of surrender into the posture, and relax your head and neck. And just enjoy that release in the lower back and the release in the hips, maybe a stretch as well there. If you wish to close your eyes as you breathe into it, please do. Just start to wind down. Start to really just let go. And 
then very, very slowly and carefully, walking the hands back as you bring the spine back up nice and tall. Maybe roll out the shoulders. If it feels good, take a little twist to one way and then the other. You can just do what feels right. And Lindsay's going to lead us into a lovely relaxation to finish. But from me, before Lindsay takes over, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Okay, so we're just going to come into a little final relaxation now. So um, it might be that you're lying down. You might find that you're um, you can grab a couple of cushions, make yourself really comfortable. Um, if you are pregnant, then perhaps lying on your back might not be the best idea, but you might find a position lying on your side or maybe sitting more upright as Charlotte is doing, fully supported by her poof binder. Um, <laughs> that might be better for you. So just find the position um, that works for you today. I would then just advise or invite you to close your eyes for the next few moments. And wherever you are, maybe make any little last minute adjustments. So if you're lying down, perhaps walk the shoulders down one by one, just to make a little bit more space between the shoulders and the neck. Wherever you are, perhaps just breathe the head side to side, ease the neck. And just make sure that you're lovely and comfortable, that you feel fully supported. And now I would invite you to bring your awareness to your breath. So just notice your inhalations and your exhalations without trying to change anything. Maybe notice if there are any pauses in between one breath and the next. And just try to keep your attention on your body and your breath. If you find that your mind wanders off to other things, then acknowledge those thoughts, let them in, and then gradually draw your attention back to your body. course stay here for as long as you need or as long as you want today and when you are ready to come back to sitting or to standing just take your time we really hope that you've enjoyed joining us today and we look forward to seeing you in the next video